Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Grizzly Growl. I am your host, Flynn Heathcliff, and I am here with a very special guest, Woo-hoo. Brianna DeCesare, senior, Woo-hoo. pursuing a major in business administration, and she's also a student assistant for student involvement. Shout out student involvement. Woo woo, sis offers. <laughs> How's it going, Brianna? Pretty good. Um, how about yourself? Um, school is about to start. So, I mean, by the time this is out, school has probably already started. Um, so if I can speak for myself in like a week or so, I'd say there's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I'm just a little concerned, um, about, you know, the, the rising COVID cases and about this, the new thing about the Delta variant, like, uh, I'm just I'm just concerned because I, I hopefully we don't have to go back online. I hope they don't shut it back down. That's a good point. Um, I think a few weeks ago, I I was completely focused on getting back in the classroom and doing everything in person. And now with the the Delta variant going on, there's a possibility that things do go back online, which in a way sucks um no i think it definitely sucks because uh, <laughs> everybody's looking forward to seeing everybody being yeah. in person and the campus life and i think that's one of the biggest things that people miss out on when yeah. you're taking online classes is the campus life yeah. what were some of the biggest things that you missed out on having to go to uh or having to take online classes I miss kind of the social part, like seeing my friends, um, because my my friends don't live close, so seeing them on campus, um, seeing everyone, just like, you know, the livelihood, the hustle and bustle, just school itself, like, I think that, you know, when people go back to school, I think that's what, like, I'm not gets me in the mood for back to school, but like, you know, puts you in the mindset, okay, I'm going to class, um, I'm going to have a productive day do some homework you know so it's kind of like a schedule like it keeps you kind of like on this schedule at least for me I would say. right and f- for me specifically I mean I graduated um but that was definitely the thing I was looking forward to most about being back at school was the social aspects I'm not gonna lie like the classroom you know that wasn't my go-to I ain't, a school- <laughs> <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't a school person but it was everything outside of the classroom that made me excited to go back. Yeah. Definitely. Like the events and stuff. I think that's probably the biggest thing, you know, is actually being able to have people at events and actually being able to go to events. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. What What was, uh, I mean, now that campus is opening back up, outside of, you know, talking with friends, what else are you most looking forward to? Um, just meeting new people, you know, when you're in classes, you know, just to see who's in your class, like, oh yeah, like I had a class with her like two semesters ago, or, you know, I really like this professor, I really don't like this professor, so that kind of thing too, just being in the classroom, being around new people, making new friends, so yeah, Mm. I like that part too. So flashing back a little bit, uh, to that first I guess I'll call it lockdown semester, lockdown, online classes, COVID semester. Um, What was your lowest point during that time period? Um, My lowest point would have to be, um, well, not to, you know, not to get too personal on here, um, but I did um, have to take care of my father. He was sick the entire time we had lockdown. Um, so that was very hard for me to try to take care of him um, while also still w- worried about COVID and also still trying to do my classes um, to make sure, you know, I still have to take exams and do classwork and do homework and make sure they're turned in on time, you know, that 11.59. <laughs> mm-hmm. so that, uh, that really was my lowest point. Um, and my father did pass away, so um, mm. that kind of him passing away and then still having to continue to finish school like make sure my grades are fine my gpa and everything because a lot of things a lot of things are dependent you know on your grades and your gpa so um i would definitely say that was like my lowest point Mm, how did you uh 
uh, muster the courage, that's the right word, to, like, persist. Because I know it's very difficult to lose someone that's close to you. I've lost, fortunately, I haven't lost anyone that was too close to me, but I've still lost people in my family. And I know that's not, and it's not an easy thing to deal with, and it's definitely not an easy thing to uh, put in the back of your mind while you're focused on uh, on schoolwork, which can feel trivial, you know, like it can feel unimportant when something very, very real, like losing, you know, a parent or a sibling happens. How did you, how did you get through that? Honestly, got to see it through my boy. <laughs> like, um, mm. like, I'm being funny, but no, seriously, um, really just thinking about like I'm a senior so like I'm so close to being done so just kind of motivating myself in that point like um, my dad was really big on education so he really wanted us to um, you know to go to school and finish school and kind of just the thing in my head like uh, my mom and dad went to they went to college but they didn't finish so that that kind of motivation for me to be the first to like go but actually like finish and I'm so close to being done it's like you you can't give up now because then all the other three four years are just wasted of hard work and late nights. So that kind of intrinsic is that the word motivation? Mm -hmm. Um, kind of really just pushed me through to keep going, um, to continue to even go to class and still participate. Um, yeah, that kind of intrinsic motivation just be like, I'm almost at the finish line. And I just, I can't stop now. I've, I've taken too much time to get here, you know, and, you know, sacrifice so much when my family has sacrificed so much to help me to get where I am. So like, it's only right that I just complete it. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm, oh, when do you graduate? Uh, spring 2022. Spring 2022. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, well, like less than a year from now, yep. less than a year from now. Mm -hmm. Let's, that's dope. Congratulations, first off. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> second off, like I'm sure your father would be proud of you, honestly. Thank you. Yeah, it's just you just have you know it's hard to think of the bigger picture when so much is going around you, but it's like you you know you just I just keep that in the front of my mind like I gotta finish, I gotta finish. Yeah. So, what would your advice be to someone? Because, I mean, your story, I know you said you didn't lose your father to COVID, but your story is a very relatable story during that period of time. Like, a lot of people were losing family members. A lot of people were losing friends and people that were close to them. Uh, what advice would you offer them to get through like you got through? Um, well, I have, I have, um, I started going to therapy. Now, I'm not saying, you know, everyone has to go to therapy, but... Mm -hmm. I was just talking to someone. Um, it doesn't have to be therapist, but, you know, family, friend, parent, like, because it's not just you that's going through it. Um, so I found that talking to my mom and like, talking to my sister and stuff really helped me, you know, see it from a different point of view. Like, he was, you know, he's all of our dads or, you know, you know what I mean? So right. Um, I my advice would just really just talk to someone that you trust and, um just speak it out, you know, just let it all out. And also just, just you know, I, I know it's hard to, to just say stay focused, but like honestly, um, staying focused and keeping busy, um, I would do because that's, I keep busy. So um, I'm not just sitting around, you know, soaking, I guess. Um, and it's, of course, it's okay to soak. It's, a, it's a definitely okay to cry and have your days, you know. But definitely get moving, get active, try to, um, you know, get more involved and, like, do more things, like, to, not want to say distract yourself, but, like, do more things that, do more things that are productive. Um, definitely help me. Yeah. That's a very, 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 that's a very good point. Um, as someone who, who is consciously, or maybe deliberately um, trying to be more open and vulnerable and communicate my feelings with people and to communicate uh, my perspectives and my thoughts. 
Um, I think some of the best advice is to start talking to people and finding people that you trust to talk to. And not just talking to anybody, but like really people that you resonate with who you know, you feel safe to talk to. Yeah. So that's some that's some wonderful advice. And I'm sure I'm not the only person <clears throat> and you, we're both not the only people who felt like during that time period, um, isolated and alone and alienated because uh, online classes is way different than in person like yeah. in person you walk out of the classroom and you see people yeah. online classes you could close your laptop and not see anyone for depending on your living situations for five hours seven hours 24 hours yeah and you just have nothing but yourself, your thoughts, and schoolwork. And that's... You're right. for, me, for me, that got boring very quick, but... Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely very challenging. And I know a lot of people who couldn't deal with it. Like, they yeah. couldn't deal with it. So they just... They stopped going to class. Yeah. Like, they, they, they either finished that semester up or dropped all their courses or... Uh, yeah, they finished that semester up and stopped going or they dropped all their courses as soon as it hit online. Um, for people who don't know, which is probably namely everyone who doesn't go to college, uh, what are some of the biggest differences between being in the classroom and the lockdown online classes? Um, I would definitely say the first one would be it's not that interaction, like that face-to-face, -face, you know, you ask a question, the teacher answers, or the class can chime in, you know, that type of thing. I don't know. I like that. I like that, you know, you can ask a question, and then, you know, you can get feedback, you start a discussion in class. Like, I kind of like that. But with lockdown, you don't really have that option. I mean, you do, but it's not as interactive as, like, if you're in the class, stuff like that. Um, and I will also, also say, like, as far as the work, I don't know if it was just me, but I felt like some of the professors were just giving, they weren't like, they were giving, they were just giving us busy work. Like they weren't giving us, like, it wasn't, you know, as like real as the work in class. I don't know how to. Right. I know you're that. saying. And I also feel like it, I was teaching myself a lot. Like most of the time I was teaching myself. Uh, and if I needed help, like it was. You can contact professors, but it was kind of like difficult to contact them or get a hold of them. I know for sure that happened to me in the summer. Um, mm. It was hard to get in contact with my teachers because, I mean, yes, they're teaching, but it's also summer vacation. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> they could be teaching on the beach. Shoot. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, so when you say summer, do you mean this past summer or last year's summer? Oh, uh, this past summer. I took classes this summer. Um, 2021 yeah wow um it were definitely it was definitely different um i think that first semester was more lenient due to the adjustment that professors and students had to make so i think professors were more understanding um and they didn't give they didn't give too much work and the work that they gave they made more accessible and manageable, easier, if you will. Um, so that first semester was pretty was pretty easy, I would say, for me personally. Um, how how was that first semester for you? The first semester for me was well, you know, since I was still dealing with my dad at the time. Um, that that part, and then also. Um, when I'm in class, like keeping keeping a track of my schedule at like for class time. So, you know, say I'm at the grocery store and I'm like, oh, I have a class at two o'clock. So I'll end up most of the time in joining my BB Collaborate or Zoom on my phone. Like I'm on the go in the car. I have my AirPods trying to listen to the class and pay attention <laughs> to the lecture. Um, so that's yeah, the, that's kind of like for me, I was just trying to make like keep a schedule and make sure that I'm attending class, like, on time. Or, like, not oversleeping or something like that. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, there were definitely times where 
uh, you join class like thirty minutes late. You be in the Zoom in the Zoom call waiting to be let in. Like, <laughs> or, or I'm a, a dial in, and so the teacher's like, "Who is this phone number dialing in?" And you got to Yeah, BB collaborate, man. That that one I wasn't too much of a fan of. What what was your uh, what was your favorite your favorite classroom? Was it Zoom, Microsoft Teams, or BB collaborate? I actually, I actually like BB Collaborate, and I'm like, what? I actually like BB Collaborate, and I like Microsoft Teams. Those two my favorite. Like, oh, what, what about Zoom? Zoom, Zoom is okay. Zoom is okay, but sometimes I don't like it, just because you know you have to wait for the host and they have to let you in, and you have to have a password. And yeah. right, right, that's true. Uh, so transitioning from that first semester, I think. After that first semester and that summer hit, um, I took summer classes that summer. Did you take summer classes that summer? Mm, yeah, I did. Okay, so like that summer, I felt like their professors were catching on a little bit, but they were still a little bit iffy. I know my professor personally, he, he was still uncomfortable with the transition, so class was still... Uh, it was still manageable, like very, very manageable. He made it very manageable for everyone. Um, and then that fall semester hit, and that's when I feel like the professors figured it out. Like <laughs> they figured it out, and it became hell. <laughs> like, it became hell. Um, there was more work assigned. It wasn't as manageable. Yep. I felt like yep. it was so yep. much going on. I had to drop a course. Um, I was it was a lot. I dropped the course too. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot, and I don't know. Like it came out of nowhere. It was just like, oh, okay, it's about to be eat. It's about to be a breeze. Nope. And then after them first few weeks, I was like, what is going on? Why do I have so much work? Why do I not have time? I thought it since it's online and it's more accessible that. It would be easier, but it became harder. Yeah, it was not easier. <laughs> what was your experience uh, that that fall semester and and going forward compared to the first semester? It was yeah, like you said, like teachers definitely definitely were not playing around. They were like, All right, you had a, you had this a year or a semester to figure it out, and now they just threw like just threw all the work on definitely difficult and then like with the you know being in school i'm still trying to work also like i was still trying even the midst of the pandemic like i was still trying to work still taking care of my dad so i had a lot going on also um with all the work i did actually have to drop a course so because the final exams came up and everything and i i was like i didn't have time to study like it was just it was it was ridiculous I think the only positive from that semester was that it ended early. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's the only positive. Um, and, and while we're talking about positives, uh, recapping or, or in retrospect, since we're going to be in person classes or in person uh, in a, in a few in a few days, which is kind of surprising. Uh, the summer went by pretty quick, but it really I say that. Did. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm in summer classes. And I, I'm like, classes just ended like July, what, 29th? No, no, I lied. July 20th. And so I'm like, I only got like, what, a week until fall starts. Right. And that, that sucks. <laughs> that sucks. That sucks. But it, it, uh, I, I forgot what I was saying. Um, <laughs> It's COVID classes, man. It's COVID classes. Um, I think the the best thing was that classes ended early. Yeah. Um, but but yeah, like I said, while we're on the positives, what were what were some of the positives, like the bright sides of these lockdown online classes? Uh, more, I feel like more like flexibility, like especially um, the classes, like some of my classes who didn't have an actual professor. He just assigned the work and let us do it on our own time. So that kind of helped because um, I don't have to worry about missing a Zoom class. I don't have to worry about doing it on the go. I could just do the work and turn it in, you know, when, when it's done or it needs to be. 
So that kind of flexibility um, and not, you know, not having to worry about being in class for like participation points and stuff. So I definitely yeah. like that. Um, and I definitely like, you know, the te- um, even the ones who did do Zoom calls um, that um, having the notes available like online, because, you know, in real, in real classes, some, I'm sorry, can you hear my dog? A little bit. Is it bad? No, nah, it's not bad. My cat's okay. in the background meowing too, so you're, you're good. Okay, no, because he's barking. <laughs> okay, back to what I was saying. But, um, yeah, that flexibility, being able to do that. And, yeah, I think I think that's about it. <laughs> wow, just one positive? Uh, mm, yeah. <laughs> I can't think of anything else. Honestly, I I I I say just one positive, but that's like the main positive. Yeah, like, is that bad? I'm like, what else you want me to say? <laughs> like the first semester, I could say it was more manageable, and that kind of ties in with flexibility. But it was more manageable. Like it wasn't as as difficult. But yeah. ever since that semester, and maybe that summer. It, it it definitely was difficult, definitely. For sure. Um, last question. Last question. Um, my cat's in the background meowing somewhere. Um, <laughs> so we're talking about these COVID classes, mm-hmm. and we're talking specifically about like social life uh, and academics but one of the things that we didn't mention was the climate of the world so uh, what i mean by that is you know if you turn on the news you hear about the the death numbers and how they're increasing and yeah. uh, if you look outside you see people with masks on and a lot of empty in those first few weeks a lot of empty parking lots a lot of bu- uh, businesses closed uh, and you know the, the world was in a flux like we were in yeah uncharted territory like unprecedented unprecedented times i don't even know if i said that right but it was it was definitely like it almost felt like it was an apocalypse like the world was coming to an end (laughs) and i know for me personally uh the first few weeks that weighed on me and i had a lot of anxiety and a lot of fear but i think as time went on i felt better and I don't know, things just started to click more, but what what influence did actual COVID like and what it did to society, uh, how did that affect you? Well, I try not to, um, I well, I try to be informed, but in general, I try not to watch the news too much because, you know, that type of stuff, it kind of makes you like panic, like, oh my goodness. I can catch COVID anytime, anywhere. Anyone can catch it, like, you know, that kind of hysteria. So I try to stay informed, but I try not to get, like, overwhelmed. Um, And I also, you know, remember to wear your mask, hand sanitizer, wash your hands. So stuff like that. Um, I try to just keep those in my head as, like, reminders to stay informed, you know, to fight COVID, but not to, like, not to let it overwhelm me and, like, make me panic more. (laughs) Mm -hmm. um but i do believe that you know like staying informed and stuff like that does like does really help i agree i agree i think it's a it's a healthy diet like it gotta be healthy i feel like if your face is in the news 24 7 then you can definitely pick up on yeah on the fear and have a lot of anxiety so yeah and i don't definitely that'll definitely have like a different like um, how you say you would have a different outlook on you know on outlook on life by watching you know by watching the news all the time hearing the stories like that right right and that's that's why I keep my distance sometimes most of the time actually yeah um so thank you Brianna this was this was amazing this was this was great thank you I was glad to be a part of the podcast I hope it goes well like you know with further episodes the rest of this semester for sure for sure I hope the same because uh this is something new um 
is there I, I guess this is uh is there anything that you would like to to say to to anyone out there like maybe a freshman coming into ggc for their first semester what would your advice be to them make make good friends um like the friends you make like try to the friends you make literally will either make or break your experience um i know my two best friends i met them freshman year we're still friends to this day so make try to make really good connections connect with people who have like similar interests to you because you can definitely go very far um you can definitely get very far with that um and i will also say um make your schedule how you want to make your schedule don't make your schedule based on anyone else because those 8 a.m's are not for me and i know that but freshman year you know i did that i tried it out and i said nah i don't like this so i my classes start past 1 30 now <laughs> so make your schedule based on your lifestyle and what you do and like try to make it complement or work well with each other especially if you work like me um like i would go to class i would go to work then go to class or i would go to class and then work like try to make it work you know around or make them work more closer together so you won't stress yourself out too much like if you get up at 3 30 don't have a class at four like you know get, have a class at five or something like give yourself enough time um to be able to just breathe <laughs> um i think that's that's all i can think of right now <laughs> see as as much as i want to say that's common sense i didn't know that when i was a freshman and i made the same mistake of picking classes at certain times 8 a.m. <laughs> if you know you're not a morning person, don't do that. If you know you're not an afternoon person, don't get a class at 4.45. You're either not going to go or you're going to, you know, be asleep. Like, just, you know, if you know yourself, just make your schedule based on if you only want to take two classes and you want to work the rest of the day, you know, do that. If you only want to take three, like, just make it for you. Yeah. It's perfect advice. Please take that advice. Please, please. If not your first semester, definitely your second definitely semester. semester. <laughs> yeah. Definitely your second semester. You'll, you'll learn on your own. That's something I had to learn. Yeah, for real. I, I had to yeah. learn that. I actually learned that in year two. So. <laughs> year, oh, yeah. wow. So there's still hope out there, y'all. <laughs> so <laughs> so, if you don't have it put together now, there, there's hope, y'all. <laughs> Oh, man. This is Flynn of the Grizzly Growl here with Brianna DeCesare. We're out. Peace. Peace.